Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that when someone says assalamu alaikum to you, you actually have to, it's a command, say salams to them back in a way that's equal or better. And mashallah, we have a full house, so I'm going to try that one more time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. MashaAllah. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbish rahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlal ugdatan min lisani yafkahu kawli ameen ya rabbil alameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adab al nar ameen. So alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has truly blessed me with a beautiful opportunity to travel around the nation and around the world. And through my travels, I've met so many Muslims. And one of the most frequent questions that I get asked in one form or one way or another is, why me? Sister Dunya, why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing this to me? Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testing me like this? I can't handle it. And believe me, I know this life is not easy. And I know that so many of you here today are also going through difficulties and challenges in your life. And you might be wondering the same exact thing. Why me? Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testing me? And I know this and I can say this with certainty because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it really clear in the Quran that this life, the nature of this life is that it's a place of tests. It's a place where He will try and test us over and over and over. And He'll test us in different ways. He'll test us in our health or with our wealth. He'll test us with our families and our friends. And He'll even test us with our emotions and how we feel. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't really know the answer to why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you or I. I don't know for sure. But that's okay. Because inshallah, when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, we'll be able to ask Him and then it'll make perfect sense. And I wanted to start off uh, my portion by reciting a few ayat of the Qur'an. It's a portion in Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah number two, that really puts this whole topic into perspective. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون 
Allahumma ja'alna minhum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. And inshallah, throughout my talk, I will be explaining these ayat in English language. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really transformed the way that we look at this life. And he did this in so many ways. And one day, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was actually sitting with his companions. And the companions said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started laughing. Now we all know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled often. But it wasn't very often where he would actually laugh. And so the Sahaba looked at the Prophet Sallallahu and they were perplexed, like, why is the Prophet Sallallahu laughing? And then the Prophet Sallallahu said something very powerful. He said, Ajaban li amril mu'min. Amazing, wonderful is the affair of the believer. There is good for him or her in everything. And that is the case only for the believer. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if something that makes him or her happy happens, they are grateful and they thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and thus that is good for them. And then he said, and when something happens to them that harms them, that hurts them, they're patient and that is better for them. And now you might be thinking that the things I'm about to tell you about hardships and trials, you might think to yourself, well, Sister Dunya has no idea what I'm going through. She doesn't understand the pain that I'm experiencing. And you know what? That's true. But I'm not going to share with you my words. Everything that I share with you today, inshallah, will be from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went through every trial and tribulation and test and challenge that you can ever imagine. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam buried six of his seven children in his lifetime. Imagine putting six of its children into the ground and putting the dirt on top of their bodies. The Sahaba said that when the Prophet Sallallahu was during the janazah of his daughter Zainab, when he was putting her body into the ground, he cried so much that they heard his chest wheeze and make a sound. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi who who lost his beloved wife Khadija, who wasn't just his wife, but his support system when he started his da'wah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was starved and beaten and physically abused and emotionally abused. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam felt pain that many of us could never even fathom. And he's the one who taught us these things. The Prophet Sallallahu was actually kicked out of his home in Mecca, driven out, and he became a refugee and migrated to Medina. The Prophet Sallallahu went through so much. And you know what he did? He reframed the way he looked at life's challenges. And he taught the Sahaba and us as well to do that. And in order to reframe the way we look at these tests that we are experiencing in life, we have to ask ourselves, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us? What do we believe about Allah? When we think of Allah, do we think of a loving and kind and merciful Lord, a forgiving Lord? Or do we think of a vengeful Lord? Did you know that once the Prophet ﷺ was standing with the Sahaba and they saw a woman frantically running around looking for something and she was crying. She was looking for her baby. And then she found her baby and she held it close. And so the Prophet ﷺ told the Sahaba, 
Do you think this woman would harm her child? Do you think that this woman would throw her child into a pit of fire? And they said, no, Ya Rasulullah, she wouldn't. Did you not see what we just saw? She just spent all this time looking for it. And when she found it, she held it so tight. And then the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and has more mercy towards every single one of you than a mother does to her newborn child. Reframing the way you look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah tests you, it's not a punishment. It's not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking revenge on you. Because the Prophet sallallahu said that when Allah loves someone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests them. And if that was the case, then why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test his beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he himself actually said, the person in this world who was most tested was me and the Prophet. Reframe the way you look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look at him as a loving, merciful Lord. And also, reframe the way you look at this world. Many of us want this world to be Jannah. Believe me, I know. I wake up every morning hoping that my day goes well, right? We wake up in the morning and we want our day to be perfect. We don't want any hiccups. When we're driving, we don't want to get a flat tire or get into an accident. When we get to work, we don't want any issues or problems. We want this world to be perfect. And we were kind of conditioned to want this world to be perfect because of social media and all of the shows and movies out there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you remember the ayat I recited in the beginning, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the reality of this world very clear. We will surely test each and every one of you with something of fear and hunger and the loss of wealth and lives. This world is a world of tests. And once we accept that, that we're not in Jannah yet, it'll make our tests so much easier. Now, when we're tested, there's three things that we can do at that time. The first thing that we can do is to be discontent with the test and angry with God. And I've met a lot of people who do that. And that road is actually a bitter road to go on. These people are miserable. The second thing that one can do when facing a test is to be patient and trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if you don't understand why. And the highest level, the third thing that one can do when experiencing a challenge or a trial or a difficulty is be content and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during that time. So inshallah today, in my very limited time, I want to share with you four things that you can do to become better at reacting and dealing with life's trials. Bismillah. Number one is your salah, your five daily prayers. We often underestimate the sheer power of our salawat. And you know, as Sheikh Saad was saying, once Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she said, Ya Rasulullah, what was the most difficult time in your life? And he said, it was the time I went to Ta'if. And we all know that after two, over two years of boycott, where the Prophet sallallahu and his companions were eating leaves, his wife died from malnutrition and his uncle. What did the Prophet Sallallahu do? He went to Ta'if and he went walking 
And when he got there and he told them about the message of Islam with this hope that they would accept the message since Quraysh was rejecting it, he was ridiculed. And they actually had their children throw stones and pelt the Prophet ﷺ until his feet were bleeding. So Aisha, when she asked the Prophet ﷺ, what was the most difficult time of your life? The Prophet ﷺ said, Ta'if. But do you know in the seerah what happened right after Ta'if? Isra and Mi'raj. And the Prophet ﷺ and all of us, his ummah, were gifted the five daily prayers. These prayers are a means of building your emotional and spiritual resilience for life's tests. In the ayat that I recited for you in the beginning from Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Istainu bis sabri was salah. Seek help, seek that power in your prayer. Because your salah will give you the ability to withstand life's tests, these inevitable tests that you and I will face. Hudayfa radiallahu anha, who was a companion of the Prophet ﷺ, he said that every time the Prophet ﷺ faced difficulty, the first thing that he would do was he would stand in prayer. He would rush to prayer. So make your prayer a means of gaining that emotional strength. If you're lacking on your prayer, if you're delaying your prayer, take today as an opportunity to say, inshallah, starting from today, I'm going to be more punctual on my prayers. I'm going to start learning what I'm saying. What does it mean when I say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Ad-Deen Subhan Rabbil Azim Sami' Allahu Liman Hamida Learn the words that you're saying in your salah so that your salah can have that benefit insha'Allah Number two Dua We often underestimate as well the power of our dua Um Salama radiallahu anha said that her husband Abu Salama radiallahu anhu one day came to her and said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught me something amazing. And so she said, what was it? And he said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told me that there's no believer who goes through hardship, who is tested or tried and says, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allahumma ajirni fi musibati wa khlifli khayran minha except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards them for their trial and compensates them with something better. Now this is where the story gets interesting. Um Salama radiallahu anha says, and when Abu Salama died, her husband that she loved so much, she says about him, he was the best husband ever. When he died, she said, I remembered this saying. I remembered this hadith. And I tried to get myself to say it. And I said it all except for the last portion. Oh Allah, compensate me with something better. She said, when I got up to that portion, I thought to myself, no one is better than Abu Salama. He was the best husband ever. But she trusted the Prophet Sallallahu And she believed in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and His power to give her something better. So she said, I said it. And do you want to know what happened right after her idda was over? The best of creation the Prophet وسلم, asked for her hand in marriage and married her. And she gained one of the greatest honors that anyone can ever gain in this life. And she became a mother of the believers. Don't underestimate the power of your dua, especially in hardship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَمَّا يُجِيبُ الْمُطَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَى وَيَكْشِفِ السُّوءِ is there anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that answers dua and that removes hardships and difficulties? When you 
raise your hands to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want you to remember something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. He said that Allah is hayyun kareem. Allah is shy and generous. That when any one of us goes like this and makes dua, that Allah does not give them what they're asking for. So make dua to Allah, especially in times of difficulty. And you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there for you. And you know, we have to practice this when we're tested in minor ways, in small ways. I want you to ask yourself something. If you are walking right now and you dropped your cell phone on the floor, what's the first thing that's going to come out of your mouth? If you're driving and someone cuts you off, what do you do? If you're walking and you trip and fall, what's the first thing that you think of? Ask yourself, because that will be an indication of what you will do when bigger calamities and trials happen. And so the way that you can train yourself is that train yourself to say this dua, to make dua, to remember Allah in the minor calamities, in these minor difficulties, and then insha'Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you with a, a greater calamity or difficulty, you'll be able to act accordingly. And make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you well-being. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually said, make dua for afiyah, for well-being. And he also said, لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو Don't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for trials. Don't ask him to be put in difficulty. Ask him for afiyah. And actually, every morning and every evening, he would make a dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyah fi dunya wal akhirah He would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for well-being in this dunya and the akhirah and make dua, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the ability to be patient when you are tested. Number three, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of ease. You know, there's a very famous narration, which is a part of the 40 uh, hadith of Imam Nawawi. It's a long narration that I really wish I had the time to go over where the Prophet ﷺ is riding with Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, and he gives the Ibn Abbas some beautiful advice. One of the parts of this advice is, تَعَرَّفْ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَاءِ يَعْرَفْكَ فِي الشِّدَّةِ Recognize and acknowledge and remember Allah in good times, in times of ease and prosperity, and Allah will remember you in times of difficulty and adversity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this in the Quran. He tells us the story of his Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. Prophet Yunus alayhi salam was in a very difficult situation. He found himself in the belly of a whale, in the middle of, an, of the night, in the middle of the ocean. And while he was in the belly of the whale, he remembered Allah and he said, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al By the way, for those of you who want the du'as that I'm talking about today, don't worry. For your convenience, I've made a little sheet that you can download from my website, which is just dunyashu'aib.com. Um, with all the du'as and the references, inshallah. So don't worry about getting the du'as. I know I'm saying them really quickly. So Yunus alayhi salam said, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al And the mufassirun have said that when he said that, the angels actually said, Ya Allah, we hear a voice that's very familiar, but it sounds so far away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, This is the voice of my servant Yunus. And Allah tells us in the Quran that because he said that, Allah got him out of the belly of the whale. But then Allah says something very interesting. Allah said, if he wasn't from the people who remembered me often, I would have left him in the belly of the whale until the day of judgment. So remember Allah 
in times of ease and Allah will remember you in times of difficulties. Once a man came to Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. Abu Darda was a great companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he said, "Advise me." And Abu Darda said, "Remember Allah when you're happy, and Allah rem will remember you when you're in difficulty." And then he said, "Make du'a when you're in times of ease, and Allah will answer your du'as in times of difficulty." Number four, last but not least, keep the end in mind. It's very interesting how the Prophet ﷺ really taught the companions to reframe the way they look at challenges and difficulties over his 23-year period as a Prophet ﷺ. One Sahabi says, that he visited the Prophet ﷺ while the Prophet ﷺ was in his last illness. And he saw the Prophet ﷺ and he sat next to him. And the Sahabi says, I was clothed. And the Prophet ﷺ was also clothed. And when my thigh touched his body, his body was so hot, I had to move away. Imagine how hot the Prophet ﷺ must have been. So this Sahabi actually says, Ya Rasulullah, you have such a high fever. And the Prophet ﷺ responded and said, My fever is like two of a normal person's fever. And I want you to really pay attention. It's very amazing what the Sahabi عنه, responded to the Prophet. ﷺ. Do you know what he said? He didn't say, Oh, poor you. Oh, Ya Rasulullah, that's so sad. No, listen to what he said. He said, Ya Rasulullah, is it because you will get double the reward? <laughs> Look at how the Sahaba learned to look at challenges. He said, Ya Rasulullah, is it because you will get double the reward? And the Prophet وسلم, said, Yes. This is the mindset of the believer. When the Prophet وسلم, said, Ajaban ni amr al mu'min, amazing is the affair of the believer. This is the mindset of the believer where they see goodness in everything. The Prophet ﷺ said yes. And then he said, no Muslim is ever afflicted with any harm or any discomfort or any pain, even if it was so small, like the prick of a thorn, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate their sins, like a tree sheds its leaves. Isn't it amazing how the Prophet ﷺ thought about you and I even during his last days? He thought, how can I change the mindset of those who will come later when they experience difficulty and when they face hardship? How will I give my ummah something that they can use to get through this hard life? And the Prophet ﷺ did it right then and there. He said to reframe and remember the end goal. Remember that your sins are being washed away. Now I wanted to conclude with something that is one of the greatest sources of comfort for me. And it's two words I want you to remember. And the two words are one dip. The Prophet ﷺ said that on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the person who experienced the most difficulty in this life, who lived the worst life. And Allah will take that person and dip them into Jannah one dip and take them out and ask them, have you ever seen any difficulty? Have you ever experienced any hardship? And that person will say, by Allah, I've never experienced difficulty or hardship. 
If that's what one dip in Jannah will do, imagine what eternity in Jannah will be like. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same way that He gathered us here, that He gathers us in the highest level of Jannah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to be patient when He tests us and to give us afiyah in this dunya and the akhirah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because only He knows what each and every one of us is going through, that He exchanges all of our sadness for happiness and all of our fear and our anxiety for serenity and tranquility. Allahumma ameen wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad jazakumallahu khayran assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.